How we doing today, boys and girls? It's your boy IronWings3187 coming at you with a new item I just picked up. Now, what you see in front of you is not actually the item. This is kind of part of the review, something that I kind of like the idea of. And this is my uh, emergency response kit. Um, for those of you who don't know, I work in a government office, and one of the rules with our government offices you cannot carry a weapon on the premises. Now, almost everyone carries some kind of knife or pepper spray, something like that, on them. But it expressly describes in our contracts no firearms in the office. So, one of the things they don't say is you cannot have firearms in your vehicle. And the thing about it is our parking lot is directly in a strip mall. And the parking lot is considered the mall's property, so it is public property. Therefore, legally, you can carry a firearm in your vehicle. And because of that, even though I have a concealed carry permit, I prefer the idea of having a gun in my car so that, that way, if I do wind up having to respond to a situation, given I'm right by the back door of my office, I can run out, grab this, open it up, get in and get out and get back in to respond to whatever shooting situation, emergency, whatever. So, this is my emergency uh, prepared kit, my emergency response kit, and inside, at the moment, this is an Apache case from my local Harbor Freight. It cost me, I think, $30. And inside, we have my most recent acquisition. This is, just so you can see it's empty, my Rock Island 3.5 inch Commander model. And this I kind of got because I like the 1911, I like the 45 ACP, and this is very nice and compact. It's only 3.5 inches, and it weighs about a pound, maybe two. Um, and it originally came with these mystery Filipino hardwood grips. And they didn't provide much in the way of hand retention, recoil management, and they were a bit wide for the grip on this pistol. So I went on to Midway USA and ordered this, from what I remember, yeah, it's a Hogue uh, rubber pistol grip with your uh, finger grooves. And it feels much better in the hand now, feels a bit more slim. Um, so why did I choose this as part of my emergency response kit? Well, because it's a semi-automatic pistol, very compact, 45 ACP, so it has plenty of stopping power. Um, I know that's kind of a myth, but in my mind, something of this size, you're limited to something like a multiple round magazine of 9mm, a 38 Special, or a 45. And since I'm more familiar and I've always used 45 ACPs for most of my life, I went with what I'm comfortable with, of course. Now, keep in mind, this is only part of the kit, and I chose this because it's a very budget-friendly pistol. This cost me about $500, plus an extra $20 for the Hogue uh, rubber grip, and $16 for two spare magazines. So, what I have in here is two magazines loaded with 230 grain round ball ammo, and one magazine, the one that came with the pistol, a seven round, loaded with 230 grain hollow points. And the idea of this being 1911s are a little finicky and notorious for not running hollow points very well. So if this magazine causes a jam, if it fails to feed, if something happens with this magazine that came with the pistol, which should be by all logic the one that works best with this pistol, these two factory... Uh, government GI surplus magazines that I have here that are seven rounds also would arguably probably work better. But there's a little bit of wobble, a little bit of play because there's a little bit of excess hanging off the bottom there. I think these would arguably work better with round ball ammo. So these are kind of my reloads or you know if my gun jams I can go back to these and I know it'll run flawlessly because they're both loaded with 230 grains. So, I would also, in this case, um, like in this Apache case that I have, the Pelican case, basically a generic, have two speed, there's a layer of foam in between here that's a divider, and underneath I would have two speed loaders of 3,825 grain plus P hollow points. 
a Taurus Model 856, and a couple of boxes of both 40, a box of 45 and 38 Special. And it's big enough to house all that. Um, overall, I would rate this as a decent little emergency kit because not only do you have this as your primary response gun, you also have a 38 as a backup with a couple of speed loaders. So either if you have a co-worker like I do who is also trained in firearm use, or you have a jam in this one and you just don't want to move, uh, try and fight it, you can drop your 1911, move on to the 38. So that's kind of where I'm coming from is it's always better in an emergency situation just to have a backup. And having a backup to a backup plan is not a bad idea to me. As for the 1911 itself, that's what this review is supposed to be talking about. I kind of got a little sidetracked about my emergency response kit here. Um, keep in mind, this is only part of it because I do have a first aid kit in my car. I have a few little emergency rations, MREs, that sort of thing. So I always in my car have something for an emergency situation, whether you be stranded or you wind up in a dangerous situation like carjacking, anything like that. Um, but as for the pistol itself, it's not very bad. Um, I've seen a lot of people give Rock Island 1911s a lot of uh, hard times over the years. And when they first came out, I can kind of understand why. They were very budget-friendly. They weren't very well machined. They were basically similar to the old 1911s you would see during World War II Korea, where they were pretty much just slapped together. They were still made well, but it was more about function than form. And to this day, it's still kind of the case with Rock Island. You can hear with this action... It's still very kind of gritty, but it is also a brand new pistol with only about 50 rounds through it. So, what do I think of this pistol? The recoil is very mild. It's arguably not the softest shooting pistol I own, but one of the better ones I've shot. Because I also own a government issue 1911, uh, well, not government issue, a government framed 1991A1 from Colt. And that one recoils a bit harder than this one, I think. Um, it's also a bit more accurate than that one. I think that's just kind of because of this rogue, uh, this Hogue grip that I have. Um, my Colt 1991 has rosewood grips on it that are carved for an ambidextrous safety. So it doesn't have as much grip or texture as the Hogue here. Um... I will tell you that, let me unload one of these magazines before I try and tell you this. This pistol does have an issue with uh, releasing the slide on an empty magazine. If I can get it to function here. Empty magazine. Won't release. But then, if you watch here... I can't even do it with one finger. I have to... Uh, really force that sucker with two thumbs. So this is kind of a pistol where I think you would be better off um, sending the slide home, loading a magazine, running the slide again, because you would be in for a lot less fight. You could also just, when the slide runs empty, like so, drop the magazine, because most magazines in this pistol will just fall freely. Slap in a loaded magazine, run the slide back, and it'll load the cha uh, it'll chamber the next round. As I said, it has a three and a half inch barrel, which, from what I've seen, is not the best for a 45 ACP's velocity. Mind, a 230 grain ball round is already probably going close to max. I've seen is eight nine hundred feet per second, maybe a little hotter. So, with a three inch barrel, that's even more reduced. That's out of a 5-inch that you were. I was just talking about, the 8 to 900. So a 3.5-inch barrel, you're probably losing 100 to 200 round, uh, feet per second velocity. And you're losing a little bit of accuracy, though, given this is pretty much a close range. This is kind of as close to a concealed carry 1911 as you can get, especially in an all-steel frame. <sighs> Honestly, there's a lot that's kind of 
odd about this gun in terms of the function. Like I said, you have the slide release that won't really function on an empty magazine. Um, the pistol, or the trigger reset here. I just, now. I pull the trigger, pull the slide back, that released the, uh, reset the sear. So in order to reset the trigger, I would, and that's exactly where the trigger reset is. Now, that's fully reset. So let's try that again. This time, let me transition my thumb here. You can see, going, going, hard reset there, and barely any, this is a long reset, even for a 1911. Mine, Colt 1991, is maybe about half that. I don't know if it's because it's the size of the frame the trigger Rock Island does. As for the trigger pull itself, they say it's a six to eight pound average trigger pull. I'd say that's probably about a high-end trigger pull, about eight to eight and a half pounds. Because you know you're pulling the trigger when you pull it. Um, another thing I do like about this pistol, though, is a couple of the options that do come with it. Um, for one, it comes with the extended beaver tail and a bobbed hammer, which is always good because with my fat mitts here, I mean, they're, my hand itself, my fingers are smaller, but my hand itself is very beefy. So on regular 1911s, the webbing of my thumb here will always override the beaver tail and get bit to hell and back to the point where I actually have a scar from shooting a 1911 because I've always shot them. Um, the other thing I do like about it is the fact that before, when Rock Island first started, uh, started getting uh, released into the U.S., one of the things they did that drove people absolutely mad is they laser engraved their entire logo across the slide. Their emblem and then their logo. Well, they've stopped that as of recently and switched over to this small, tiny logo right here in the back right half of the front, or the back uh, left-hand side of the frame. And that's actually fairly nice to me because it's not as noticeable and it's right where you cock uh, your slide so over time i think that's gonna lose the white that it has darken up a bit and fade into the slide with regular use what else is there to really say about this pistol um i am i do have to say that i'm a little disappointed in the sighting system this is just your standard gi dovetail and front sight post nothing spectacular about it nothing super fancy but back in the day, this exact pistol, the GI model itself, also, that one sold with Novak-style rear sights. And it, since then, um, Rock Auto, or Rock Island, sorry, Rock Island has since switched over to this GI style because they now have the two different model, uh, model lines. You have the GI series and the, I think it's SD or self-defense series, and the SD, or Tactical Series, has the Novak Sights. And to me, I really do think if Rock Island's going to go with this, oh, the GI sh uh, should have this GI rear sight and front post, you should at least have it cut the same as you would a Novak Sight, so that that way, if someone wants to upgrade the rear sight to a Novak, they don't have to get it recut. And on top of that, I kind of understand it because you want to be able to use the same rear sights on this as you would your regular GI models. But it would just make it a little bit more convenient for the customers, especially since you used to do that back in the day. So what do I think of this pistol overall? Have I had any issues with it? Any malfunctions? So far, no. I have not had any malfunctions. Of course, I haven't really shot any hollow points through it. Um, because at the moment I am still looking for the right sized bullets for reloading and I'm kind of limited on how many 45 ACPs I can hand load because I only have about 50 small primer cases and my silhouette that I use for reloading is on back order. I actually have a couple pounds of it coming next week. Um, so yeah, I haven't had any issues with this feeding but that's because I've only fired ball ammo through it. These are notoriously a bit more finicky, but I don't know if that's the case with Rock Island and their commander line here. 
I do know that was the case back with the old Colt Commander series. So can I recommend you pick one of these up for the price? For $500, eh, I'd say maybe, because at $500 there are a lot worse options you could get for that price, and they're a lot better. For comparison, um, a lot of Smith & Wesson 38 revolvers tend to run right around that same price point. But for about $100 cheaper, you can get like my the one I'm waiting to pick up from my local gun shop, the Taurus 856, which was, I think, $429 in my local gun shop. Brand new in the box with a couple of speed loaders and a box of plus P's. And that, while you're limited in capacity, is just as concealable as this but a little bit easier to hide because it doesn't have these straight lines. It's a little bit more irregular shaped than this 1911. But in this case, with my emergency kit, that doesn't really matter all that much. So would I recommend you buy it for the price point? Honestly, I kind of would because you're getting a much better product made on, I think, the old Colt machines that were lent into the Philippines for making 1911s back in the 90s. And... For the price you're getting, you're getting a good product. It's not unreliable. It's not terrible quality. There are some flaws to it, but I think with a little bit of upgrading, some break-in, and some work on it, this can be a very good pistol. Would I recommend it be your everyday carry? Probably not, because this is a big chunk of a gun for its size. And like I said, a 38 Special is a little bit lighter than this, especially if you get something like the... Uh, Charter Arms Undercover Ultralight series. Stuff like that is very light and almost as affordable. So, yeah, I can recommend you guys pick this up wholeheartedly because I do think it is a decent quality pistol for the product you pay. Or, for the, it's a decent quality product for the price you pay. And I think it's going to last you a lot longer than something like a, a High Point C45. I think this will last you a lot longer than a lot of other... 45 ACP budget pistols because this is all steel. It's uh, made in the Philippines, but it's made out of good quality materials. With the exception of maybe the grips because I don't know what kind of wood this is, if it's good quality wood. It feels cheap to me and it looks pretty ugly, but that's just personal taste. You know, each their own. So, with that out of the way... What do you guys think? Would you pick one of these up? Because I know that the 1911 today gets a lot of bad rap. And I think that kind of comes from the fact that it is kind of an outdated, heavier design. And it doesn't offer the capacity that most would. But there have been attempts to modernize the 1911. The only reason I chose this one is because I wanted something smaller that I could fit into one of these cases. And I wanted something cheaper that wasn't like a high-end Kimber. Because one, Kimbers are also notorious for malfunctioning. And two, I don't want to, if this gets, if my car gets broken into and someone steals this pistol, I'm not going to get beat up about it because it was only three, well, it was 500 bucks. And I still have my regular 1911 instead of having to put that in. Same thing with the little 38. I have my other 38 in my gun safe at home. So if my little $400 Taurus 856 gets stolen, big deal. So, would you guys pick this up? I'm kind of curious because I quite like it. I think it's decent. The trigger pull's a little heavy. It does have the tendency to not release properly when you have an empty magazine. But at the same time, that can kind of work if you're at a range because if it doesn't... I've had a lot of 1911s where all you have to do is pretty much just tap the slide release and it sends it home before you're able to show the range master you are on empty. So with this, it could kind of almost be seen as a safety mechanism when you're at the range to show you're clear. But that's just me kind of coming up with an excuse for it being pretty poorly machined, if that's the case, or it won't release. But the funny thing is, you release it with a loaded magazine, you release it on a sl empty slide, like no magazine, no empty magazine, and just the slide, it releases smooth and uh, very lightly. Um, other than that, like I said... I would recommend you pick up a couple of spare magazines because there are affordable magazines out there. I, A few years ago when I first got into the 1911 shootings, I picked up about 20 or 30 of these, I want to say. These are a little $8 old USGI surplus magazines from the Philippines also. 
imported by Sarco Inc. And they were on flawlessly, in my experience. They're only seven rounds, but for eight bucks a piece, as a broke college student when most 1911 magazines today cost upwards of 20 or 30 bucks, you can't really disagree with the price range alone. So, other than that, that is the Iron Wings 3187 review on his emergency preparedness kit, partially. Part 2 coming up in a couple of weeks once I get that uh, Taurus 856 from my local gun shop and get some range time in. And let me know down below what you think, because at this point, all in all, for an emergency preparedness kit for like mass shootings, office shootings, that sort of thing, all's told with this, I have $5 in for a gun lock, an old uh, Taurus that I had, an old, not Taurus, a Rossi gun lock. Um... Uh, I'm just rounding up the price for you guys to gather this thing up. About 30 or 40 bucks for this knockoff uh, Pelican case, which is named Apache at Harbor Freight. 500 for the um, 1911, which comes with one magazine. $16. So let's do some math here, just because I've never been good with numbers. 16 plus 40. So that's 561 just for what's in here alone, plus about another $8 for two speed loaders. Because I was able to get those fairly cheap from a friend of mine who stopped carrying an old 38 of his, got rid of it, and had a bunch of them that he found lying around in an old drawer in his garage. Uh, and I think it was $400 for... So, all in all, I have about $1,000 as an emergency reaction kit. When a Pelican case of this size alone usually costs you about 100 bucks. a good Kimber 1911 of this size, I think, costs about 800 And a Smith & Wesson Airweight or a Smith & Wesson uh, J-Frame costs about four to $500, same as this 1911. So... You're going from basically a $1,000 kit up to about a, I want to say, $2,000 kit. Roundabouts there. So, overall, I think it's a decent little kit. I don't think it's poorly put together, and I think it's pretty rugged. Let me know what you guys think down below. Would you, would you operate with this emergency kit? Just keep it as an emergency supply line? Or do you think you'd switch out a few things? What would you put in here? Go ahead and let me know down below in the comments. Um, of course, it's missing a knife, but that's because I always keep a... I either keep a Mercator K55K in my pocket, or I will have on other days when I'm not in an office building something like a Hogue Spearpoint. I can't remember the proper name of it. But I tend to keep a pocket knife on me at all times, so I don't really think I need for an emergency response kit a fixed blade, something like that, in this case in particular. Otherwise, I appreciate you guys watching. Go ahead and hit the like button. Subscribe down below if you aren't already. Let me know what you think.